All right, in this video, uh, we're going to see me try to do some kicking instead of running this time. Um, and see if we can figure out something about uh, two-dimensional motion and projectile motion. All right, not terrible, not terrible. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can figure some things out. First, let's look at the timing of the kick. Uh, here's where we start. There's where we end. All right, now we can figure something out about how this is actually going to work. Uh, let's go ahead and go over to the whiteboard. So of course in this problem, what I'm most interested in is how fast do I kick a ball? What's the speed with which I kick that ball? Um, to do this, we're, again, um, as this is another two-dimensional problem, uh, we're going to have to go ahead and, and solve uh, our, our equation in, in both dimensions. Um, the good news is that we have a little bit uh, of, uh, we should have enough information uh, to actually uh, get um, to get our answer. Uh, again, let's just remind ourselves, first of all, what happened. Uh, I kicked, and again, the reason I always start out with a sketch is because it helps us to label things and make sure we understand what's happening. So I kicked a ball from here, and it went kind of in an arc down to the ground here at some later time. Oh, some later time. Uh, and remember we got the times, we got that this was, we just called this t equals zero and this was t equals 3.16 seconds. Uh, I think I actually, in the video, I think I did uh, 3.2 seconds. Um, uh, I went back and actually figured out this distance as well. Um, this distance I estimate to be about 20 meters or so, around 20 yards. Um, you can go ahead and check that to see if uh, if your values agree. Um, there are five meter hash mark or five uh, yard hash marks, uh, but that's that's about what I what I found this to be. Um, this would be pretty easy to solve if we could if we knew actually the angle that I kicked it at. Unfortunately, we we don't, um, and that's actually something we can solve as we go along. Um, so with just this information, let's look at what we can do. Uh, first, I want to start in the x direction. Um, so uh, just label that x dimension or x direction if you like to. And um, I want to remind you again uh, that um, we can we, we have a, a very simple equation that relates uh, how far the thing went, how far the ball went, um, and uh, the velocity, which is that x is just equal to x zero plus v zero x times t. And it's really important that you remember that this is just the velocity in the x direction. Again, it's not the total velocity. What we're, what we're interested in the end is the total velocity. Uh, but, um, but that's going to be a little harder for us to find. Um, this equation just tells us something about the x direction, which means that it only tells us something about the x velocity. And I'll show you later how we actually finally get the final velocity. Um, the other thing I forgot to do was actually set where my origin is. It's a big no-no, but um, uh, I think it's pretty obvious where I want to set it. I want to set this um, where we call x and y zero. All right, just right there. That'll be our origin. Um, and again, I'm going to use our normal coordinate system of x and y. I know you're probably getting tired of seeing this, but I really just suggest you do this in every single problem. Because if it ever changes, it's going to really mess you up. It, it will, actually, in the future. We'll, we'll be doing stuff where we rotate the right, that around. Okay. So, um, x is the final position. Uh, that's this one right here, right? The, the, the one at the end is our x. That's our 20 meters. Um, so, again, we know... Let's just look at our knowns and unknowns. We know x. We know x0. We've actually set that equal to 0. Um, we don't know v0x, and we do know the t. So we can actually find v0x simply from this equation. So let's just solve for t. Um, sorry. Uh, we have x minus, minus x0 is equal to v, v0x times t. I've just moved the x0 over. I've just subtracted both si x0 from both sides. Now I'm just going to divide by t. And I'll get x minus x0 divided by t is equal to v0x. Um, so, uh, 
let's go ahead and solve for that. Um, we've got that uh, the distance that it traveled was 20 meters. Again, it started at 0 meters. And we're dividing by the total time, which is 3.2 seconds. All right. And that just gives us, go ahead and try, okay. divide by 3.2. Um, uh, it gives us a uh, 6.25 meters per second. Now again, I want to remind you that that's just the v0x. It's just the x velocity. Um, now we need to find uh, the the y velocity. Um, and as you can imagine, to do that, we need to switch over to the y equation. So let's do the y dimension. Um, again, we're going to use a similar equation, but this time we need to account for acceleration. So we're going to use this equation. Um, this is much easier because we're just going to assume, I know it's not quite true because the ball was a little off the ground when I kicked it. We're just going to assume that the ball starts and stops at the same point. And so that means y and y0 are actually both zeros. So we, our equation is actually going to get much simpler here where we're just going to get 0 is equal to, um, that's just 0 plus, I'm not going to write the 0 plus, so just 0 is equal to v0y plus 1 half at squared. Um, uh, and there should be a t there. Um, let's, um, let's write that a little nicer. Okay. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and solve uh, for t. Um, or sorry, solve for uh, v zero y. I'm just going to subtract it over here, so we get minus v zero y t is equal to one half at squared. Now, you notice I have a t over here and a t squared over on the other side. Um, it turns out that as long as we can be sure that our time isn't equal to zero, uh, and the time zero is basically just um, that, uh, uh, that initial point, uh, basically, whenever, whenever we start out. Um, so since we don't care about that, we can actually Get, uh, divide both sides by t, and then we get a minus v zero y. We divide out our t is equal to one half a t. All right, so that's looking much nicer. Or the other way to put that is v zero y is equal to one uh, negative one half a t. We go ahead and plug in our numbers. We get that that's minus one half. Again, what's our acceleration? Our acceleration is, is due to gravity in this case. All right, our y acceleration is due to gravity. Um, and that's just, it gives us that minus 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, and then we just multiply it by the time, which again is just 3.2 seconds. You know, so we have two negatives, which is good, because our, our initial y velocity was in the up direction. Um, so we just need half of, uh, so we need 0.5 times Nine eight times three point two, and then we get fifteen point seven um, meters per second as our as our y, our v zero y. Now, if we want to find our um, our final velocity and some things about uh, or our, our actual initial velocity at the beginning total, so what we have now, this is where we need to remember our vectors video. We have v zero x. We also have v zero y. We're interested in v zero. All right, so we just use the Pythagorean theorem. So v zero. We just keep the square root of v zero x squared plus v zero y squared. Um, they go in and plug in our numbers. Um, five squared plus We find that the initial velocity total was about sixteen point nine meters per second. Um, we're approximately, you know, 30 miles an hour or so. So it's pretty good. Uh -huh. Good enough. Um, 
The other thing we can find out is we can find out uh, what this angle is, basically what angle I kicked it at. Uh, of course, 45 degrees would be the best if I wanted to get it to go as far as possible. Um, to do that, we can look at, um, well, now that we have V0, we can do any, any series of them, but I'm going to use the tangent. We know that the tangent of theta is going to be equal to opposite over adjacent, or V0y over V0x. This is going to be uh, 15.7 over uh, 6.25. And then we just make, need to take the inverse tangent of each side to get theta. Um, so let's take the inverse tangent. Sorry, uh, I'm running out of room. Inverse tangent of that. Uh, 6.7 divided by 6.25. Um, and the inverse tangent is. Uh, it gives us uh, 68 degrees. Let's say that it was 68 degrees. So I think they're a little high. Let's explain why we had such a long hang time. Okay, so that's about all we can learn about that problem. You see, we figured out what the x component of the velocity is, what the y component of the velocity is. We figured out the total velocity, and we even got the uh, the angle that I kicked it at. Um, not bad for a quick little bit of work, and uh, hopefully it gives you a better idea about how uh, all this stuff with uh, kinematics works. Uh, thanks. See you in class.